Hey everybody. Uh, tonight I'm going to do a water change here on my 125 gallon native tank. I still don't have anything in it other than these minnows, but I think maybe by the end of tonight I may have my crayfish in there. I'm really not in the mood to do this. I really don't feel like shooting a lot of video or anything, but it really needs to get done. The tank is getting very dirty with the algae. If you want to call that dirty, I don't necessarily think of it as dirty, but it is something that needs to be, you know, kept on top of and addressed. I'm also getting a lot of tannin build up. The water's getting really stained. I doubt my nitrates are very high. I'm probably not even going to bother to check. Uh, I may, again, I got time to kill. This is going to be a big water change, so it will take some time for uh, the tank to empty. So this is just going to be a little bit of a before and after. I think I may discuss a little bit of my algae control methods while I'm in there working on it a little bit. And uh, maybe any other little thoughts that pop into my head as we move along. So this just gives you a pretty good idea of what the tank looks like uh, to begin with. And then I'm going to go ahead here and get started and we'll see where the video goes from here. All right, everybody, I'm still draining the tank, but I wanted to make a point here before I get the tank any lower because I'm going to do some work and it will sort of screw up the whole point of this segment of the video. Now, if you'll notice, it seems like I've already cleaned the glass on the front, but I have not. If you look very closely, you can see I've cleaned the glass down to where the water line was at the time. It has since drained a little more, and I'm actually waiting until it gets a little lower than this, and I'm going to wipe down as much as I can above the water line before I go any further. Once I've drained it as far as I'm going to drain it, I will then go ahead and wipe as much as I can below the water line and get the tank as cleaned up as I can in the last you know few minutes while the tank is still draining. And there is a reason for that, and I will go into it here in a few moments. I've also got the uh, rock in there sprayed down with a fair amount of hydrogen peroxide. You can see all that sort of whitish color. That's actually the suds and the foam from the hydrogen peroxide. I've also sprayed this branch with hydrogen peroxide. That lighter color is actually just lighter wood underneath. But all this sort of sudsy, foamy looking stuff is the hydrogen peroxide reacting with the algae on the wood and the different organics that are in the wood, the different proteins I should say, well I suppose proteins are organics, but it's the proteins in particular that the hydrogen peroxide is reacting to. So give me a few more minutes, once the tank is filling up we'll have a little bit more time to chat and I'll be on a little less uh, tight of a time schedule. I'm going to go about an inch lower than this and then we'll start filling it back up. And this is the bottom of the line. I'm not going to go any further than this. I just got in there and gave a good vigorous scrub down on all the glass below the surface and above. I got everything wiped down uh, as best I could. I gave a final spray of hydrogen peroxide onto this rock. And that is as much water as I'm going to take out of the tank. So it's time for me to start filling it back up. I just wanted you to see how much water I actually removed from this tank. So keep in mind all those rocks, all that woodwork, all that gravel, that's displacing water as well. So I would probably guesstimate this to be at least an 80% water change. Does that look about right? So there you go. Time to start filling her back up. All right, now that we are on the way to being filled back up, I can actually take a moment to think about what I'm doing here. Now the reason I tried to wipe as much down above the surface of the water as I could was something I talk about often. Algae is not a macro plant. Algae is a colony plant. Each individual algal plant, if you will, is actually a single celled organism. So it takes hundreds, if not thousands, of them living in a colony before it's even a tiny little speck that you can see. Again, these are single cells we're talking about. So I don't delude myself into thinking that I'm going to prevent spreading any of those cells around in the tank by wiping it down when it's above the water level, but I am reducing it. You know, it's hundreds of millions of cells of algae, and if I can let that get above the water and wipe it down and remove it, well, maybe I still might get millions of cells in the water, but I'm not getting hundreds of millions of cells in the water. Does this make a difference? 
I think it does. It seems to in my experience. If I had simply gone in and taken my scraper or my scrubber in the tank and just scrubbed all that down underwater while I was doing a water change, all that water, all that algae would have just been swirling around the tank while the water was draining. Now, grant you, a lot of it would have gone out in the siphon, but a ton of it would not have. And all it takes is a single cell to deposit somewhere, and you've now got it growing there. I've also spoken about how the algae gets angry when you damage it and when you scrape it and wipe it. And that's what you're doing when you wipe it into the tank. So again, this is just something that I do that probably just gives me a little bit more time. It gives me a little bit more breathing room between treatments because it is going to come back. It is still in the tank. There's no possible way I avoided doing that, especially when you consider at the end of it all, I still got underwater and wiped down algae. Now, I also do this with hydrogen peroxide sprayed onto the cloth that I'm using. Um, I use a little bit of the batting material here. Let me show you. Uh, this stuff that I use in my filter, I just tear a chunk of that off. I spray it down with hydrogen peroxide and get it nice and wet, and I use that to wipe the glass. So anything that's sort of running down and in the, in the wetness that runs down into the tank with it and carrying those cells is also carrying those cells in a solution of hydrogen peroxide. So again, I'm reducing the amount of living cells that are going to get into the water with spraying down this rock rather than scrubbing down this rock. The hydrogen peroxide is killing the algae rather than me scrubbing at it and breaking it loose and knocking it loose and getting it all moving around the tank. Again, not going to really make a huge difference in the grand scheme of things. But considering I'm the one that has to maintain this tank and get in there and wipe everything down, these are just little tricks and tips I've learned that help sort of reduce how rapidly it comes back. Now the other issue I'm having in this tank is it's still a new tank and I'm still getting the brown diatom algae developing and at this point I don't have anything in the tank that's going to eat it. It'll sort of go away eventually but it takes a long time for the tank to balance out. A lot of you know that I got my T-bar tank set up here not too terribly long ago but it's been quite a while been months and I still have brown diatom algae in this tank. I really still don't feel like this tank has found its balance. We're still working on it. So it's going to be quite a while before this tank finally gets settled in. So with the diatom algae, where they come from and what they are is it's algae, but it's an algae that lives inside of a little shell that it builds for itself. And it builds that shell out of silica and it gets that silica from dissolved silicates in your water so my water for example has about three or four parts per million dissolved silicates in it and I have well water so that's about the threshold where the diatoms need that many parts per million in the water in order to build their little shells so what happens is when you fill your tank up, first of all, and it's a nice fresh new tank and you're just getting it started, it's got all of those silicates in there. And then, of course, the diatom algae starts using it to build its little shells and you get the brown algae all over everything in your tank. And you do a massive water change because you want to get your water all nice and clean, just like I just did. Well, I'm putting a lot of dissolved silicates back in the tank. If I had done a 10% water change, that wouldn't have been the case. I would have still been putting water in there that has, let's say, three parts per million silicates, but it only would have been a 10% change. I wouldn't have been filling the tank back up with water that's got a lot of silicates in it. But I just did a massive water change, so I just put a lot of silicates back in the tank. So I'm a long way from being done with the brown diatom algae. I've just sort of started that whole bloom all over again. I'm probably going to have a big bloom of brown here in the next few days. Not in the water, but just growing on the surface of things. I'm going to get a lot of diatom algae. Uh, likewise, <coughs> excuse me. Likewise, with the scraping and the wiping into the tank, if you've got the brown diatom algae on your 
uh, glass, for example, and you wipe it off and you knock it loose into the tank, it's very easy to do. The diatoms do not attach very firmly to any surface. They're just very loosely attached and you can easily just brush them or wipe them right off. And if you're doing a water change, they swirl around in the water and you see all the brown water and you do a nice big water change and you get them all out of there. Well, every one that you didn't get out of there is a little shell made out of silicate. So, as whether they die or whatever, if they're, you know, there, there's these dead shells in your tank, they're now dissolving back into the water. In the same way, if you have silica sand in your tank, that silica sand is constantly dissolving into your water and constantly putting silicates into your water, and you'll never get rid of your diatom algae if you've got silica based rocks, if you've got silica sand. And likewise, just like I don't want to knock any of the green algae loose because I'm just spreading it around the tank, with the diatoms, you're not so much spreading them around the tank, and it's not that big a deal, but it is a factor to consider. If you're knocking all those little shells loose, you're knocking all those little, you can think of them maybe as little tiny grains of sand, and they're so small you'll never see them again. They'll settle down in between the gravel and the substrate, but it is silicate. It was pulled out of the water in the first place. It was made into those shells. It will dissolve back into that water eventually. So just keep all that stuff in mind. The whole system of a fish tank is just that. It's an ecosystem. It's not, you know, uh, I, I get asked questions all the time that are sort of broad and generalized. And you really can't just say do this or do that because it's an entire system. Every time you change one thing, it affects everything else in there. And your algal growth has got everything from do from how much you feed it to what you're stocking it to not only how much light, how long, you know, the photo period is, what kind of light you've got shining on it, how much nutrients you've got in your tank, how big a water change you've got what the water chemistry is and there's just so many factors that go into how do I get rid of algae or you know how do I do this or how do I do that so that's just a little bit of me rambling again I didn't really feel like shooting anything specific but while I've got some time to kill letting the tank fill back up I thought I would chat about uh, the algae I am currently fighting and I'm really not going to stop fighting it until I get some sort of algae eating fish in there again I'm sort of tossing the idea of throwing my molly in there but that's really probably not going to happen uh, I'll get into that later we'll talk more about stocking the tank uh, as time moves on or if I make any changes but at some point I'll get some sort of algae eating or off walks grazing fish in this tank and I will let nature start taking care of this tank with a little assistance uh, from yours truly but I'll get something in there that will work on that algae from the inside out and we'll start dealing with it that way eventually in the meantime I'm going to keep on getting this tank filled up and we'll do one final bit uh, probably tomorrow morning once the tank gets all settled back in and looking nice and we'll shoot one final video. So sit tight and I'll see you then. So there's your after and it is in fact still tonight. It is not tomorrow morning. What I wanted to do was let the tank completely clear out, get the water nice and clear again, let all the detritus settle, get all the bubbles off of everything, but for one, I want to get this video wrapped up, so I decided we're just going to go ahead and wrap it up tonight. And secondly, more importantly, this is the real reason I wanted to show you this, I hope it comes out on camera. You probably can't make them out very well, but you will probably see a bunch of little white squiggly things swirling around in the tank. I have looked at these very closely. I've picked one out and followed it around the tank and they are very clearly wriggling and wiggling on their own. They are not simply little bits of detritus. They are detritus worms. So I've already got detritus worms all through this tank which doesn't bother me at all. They're harmless. They're actually uh, can be thought of as part of your cleanup crew. It's ironic. I was sitting here uh, someone had uh, Responded to one of my videos from long ago where I was speaking about detritus worms and they had asked me a question about it And as I was answering the question I was looking at the tank thinking man those things look an awful lot like what I'm talking about right now And I got up when I was done and came over and sure enough. That's what they are 
So it doesn't surprise me with all of the woodwork and all of the rocks I put in there that I gathered up from being outside. Um, even the gravel that's in there. That's old gravel I've used in other tanks before. Who knows what was in that. I did my best to clean it up. But I knew this was going to be part of this tank. And being a native tank I knew there was going to be stuff introduced to it like the algae we've been working on. So I also wanted to follow up by pointing out that as much as I was talking about using hydrogen peroxide and you can still see the results of it there it's still got the bubbles all over the wood and down here we can see where the bubbles are still all over the wood a little bit of bubbles on the rocks there and that is all from the hydrogen peroxide please do not use hydrogen peroxide if you don't know what you're doing with it I'm not going to get into it in this video I really don't recommend using it um, it's one of those, it's sort of, I was th sitting here thinking about what to compare it to. It's kind of like riding a skateboard or doing tricks on a motorcycle. Nobody gets good at doing that stuff without wrecking their motorcycle a bunch of times. And you just are not going to get good at using hydrogen peroxide, no matter how much you read about it. If you use it in your fish tank, you're going to make mistakes with it at some point and you can do a lot of damage when you do that. I've done it. I've been there, done that too many times. Um, I'll just say that on one fateful day, I made a tragic mistake with hydrogen peroxide and I killed eight fish, equaling nearly $300 in my angelfish tank one day. I lost quite a few very expensive plecos and I lost a few others as well. Um, you know, it was a mistake I made and I made it with hydrogen peroxide. I made a similar mistake using RO water and I killed seven of my petrocolas, my synodontis, in my same angelfish tank. And that was using RO water. So it's just mistakes that are made by lack of experience. So you're going to make mistakes anyway. You can minimize the mistakes by not using very dangerous and potentially toxic uh, substances in your fish tank like hydrogen peroxide. If you want to read about it and you want to learn about it, it is useful to know about, but I'm really not going to be the one to talk about it very much, at least not in this video. I also wanted to point out on one final note while I'm thinking about it, if you will look where the shadows of these branches are, you can very clearly see a lack of diatom algae. So that is pretty conclusive that diatom algae is in fact algae. It does photosynthesize and it does need light to grow. So more light and the right, you know, favorable wavelengths of light uh, will actually cause this algae to grow more. You can see there where that wood shifted a little bit and now that new surface is exposed and there's no diatoms growing on that because it had been shielded by the branch above it. So clearly it is an algae that needs sunlight or you know, some other light source like all other algae. Just because it's brown does not mean it's not an algae. So there you go. I uh, hope that covered pretty much everything. As I said, this was pretty spare of the moment. It's going to be interesting to see uh, what happens with all these detritus worms, whether or not they continue uh, thriving in here or not. I would imagine with the wood breaking down and the sticks and the logs and everything in here, whether I feed a tank a lot or not, I'm probably just going to have those uh, in here until I get something that really eats that sort of down in the gravel kind of stuff. So we'll see one step at a time. As I keep saying, this tank is a long way from done. So on that note, make sure you're subscribed. You won't miss any updates I got coming up. Uh, sorry there's no fish in this one. They're all gone to ground hiding because of the traumatic experience of the water change. So thanks again for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And I'll see you real soon on the next one.